سلام 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 ഗ്രീറ്റിംഗ് Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace blessings and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you The topic of today is Salah the programming towards righteousness Most of the people they translate the word salah into English as the prayer but the prayer is not the exact translation of the Arabic word salah because to pray means to beseech to ask earnestly like how you pray or beseech in a court of law to pray means to supplicate to ask for help the dua is the supplication the prayer in our salah besides asking for help from allah subhanahu wa taala we muslims we also praise him we also receive guidance from him and the salah simultaneously is a sort of programming it is a programming towards righteousness and we human beings we are programmed five times a day but suppose if a muslim if he is going to offer salah and if a muslim asks him that where are you going and if he says he is going for programming or if he is going for brainwashing it will sound odd So I personally do not mind if anyone uses the word salah for programming but they should remember that salah does not merely mean prayer the moment you hear the word programming you start thinking of a computer if you allow me to call the human being a machine i would say it's the most complicated machine on the face of the earth it is much more complicated than the most advanced computer in the world the psychologists they tell us that our mind is not directly under our control the body is directly under our control if i want to lift my hand i can lift it if i want to bring it down i can bring it if i want to take a step forward i can take it the body is directly under our control but the mind is not directly under our control Therefore we Muslims we might have experienced that many a times while offering salah our mind keeps on wandering the reason is because our mind is empty and our mind cannot remain empty therefore it wanders we Muslims you know the basic things which we recite in our salah the surah fatiha and the other verses of the whole quran which we recite We Muslims we recited so mechanically that even if you wake up a Muslim from the middle of his sleep and ask him to recite surah Fatiha he can do it 100 miles per hour Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in It's mechanical 
and because it is mechanical, only a minute portion of our mind is neutralized in reciting the Arabic portion. Most of us Muslims, since we are non-Arabs, we don't understand Arabic as a language. And because we don't understand what we are reciting in our Salah, there are high possibilities of our mind wandering. So therefore, to prevent our mind from wandering, we should recite the Arabic portion and simultaneously recall the meaning of the things you are reciting in the language you understand best. If you know English, recall the English translation. If you know Hindi, recall it in Hindi. If you know Marathi, recall it in Marathi. If you know Gujarati, recall it in Gujarati. Recall the meaning of the things you are reciting in the language you understand best. For example, when we recite Surah Fatiha, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, most gracious, most merciful. Maliki Yawmiddin, the master of the day of judgment. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nastain. Thee alone we worship, thee alone we ask for help. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, show of the straight path. سراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The path of those who have earned in favor, and of those whose path is not raw, nor of those who go astray. When we recite Surah Fatiha and other verses of the Holy Quran, simultaneously recall the meaning, and your mind will not wander, because a little portion of your mind is neutralized in reciting the Arabic portion. And another portion of your mind is neutralized in reciting its meaning. There are less chances your mind will wander, but yet it may wander. A human being cannot concentrate 100% on two different things. He can concentrate 50% on two different things, or 80%, 20%. But 100% on two different things he can't concentrate. So the more you concentrate, the less your mind will wander. So to prevent your mind from wandering, you should decide the Arabic portion, recall its meaning, and simultaneously understand the meaning. Then, inshallah, your mind will not wander. I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Holy Quran from Surah Ankabut, chapter 29, verse number 45, which says, "Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa akimu salata in salat tanha an al-fahshay wal munkar." which means recite of what we have sent by the inspiration of the book to thee and establish regular prayers. For verily, prayers restrain you from shameful and unjust deeds. The Holy Quran says that prayers restrain you from shameful and unjust deeds. As I said earlier, Salah is a sort of programming. It is a programming towards righteousness. And we human beings, we are programmed five times a day in our salah. And we ask for help and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Show us the straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the answer. He programs us towards righteousness. For example, if the Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he may recite Surah Maida. Ya yuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ Most certain intoxicants and gambling. وَالْأَنْسَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ Dedication of stones, divination of arrows. رِجْسٌ مِّنْ أَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاشْتَنِبُوهُ لَأَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Abstain from these handiworks that you may prosper. Here we have been programmed that we should abstain from intoxicants, from gambling, from idol worship, because these are Satan handiworks. The Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he may recite Surah Maida, chapter 5, which says, Forbidden for your food are blood, dead meat, the flesh of swine, and anything on which any name besides Allah has been invoked on it. The Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he may recite Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 23, which says, It's ordained for you that you worship none but Allah, and that you be kind to your parents. And if any one of them, or both of them, reach old age, do not say a word of contempt. Don't even say oof to them. But address them with humility and pray to the Lord, 
that have mercy on them as they cherished me in childhood. Here we have been programmed that we should be good to our parents. The computer normally requires programming only once. But since we human beings have a free will of our own, which the computer doesn't have, there are high possibilities of our mind wandering. So, we human beings, we have been programmed five times a day in our salah. There may be some people who say that why you offer five times a day? Why don't you offer only once? For a healthy body, a human being requires three meals a day. If he has one meal, he will not be healthy. So, similarly for a spiritual soul, a human being requires minimum five times a day salah, five times prayer. One is not sufficient. Salah is a way of life. It caters to the spiritual aspect of the soul as well as the physical needs of the body. And the Holy Quran says in Surah Anfal, chapter 8, verse number 2, that when Allah is mentioned, they feel it, that the true believers are those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel a trauma in the heart. And when his signs are rehearsed, it strengthens their faith and they put their complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mentioned in Abu Dawud in the book of Salah. It says that the first thing the Prophet said, that the first thing a person will be asked to account among all his actions on the day of judgment is Salah. That means the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inquire you is regarding Salah. There is a very famous dua in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 which says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fil akhirati hasanatum wa kina azabin nar. Which says, that, oh my Lord, give me the good in this world and in the hereafter, and save me from the torment of hellfire. Muslim, living in any part of the world, he is our brother. We should feel for him. Muslims are suffering. Muslims are butchered. Muslims are slain. And some of us, even they don't feel, they don't cry over that. Salim Al Amri. If one organ is in pain, the whole body feels that. Whether he's in India, whether he's in Far East, whether he's wherever the Muslim is, he is my brother. I should feel for him. Dr. Zakir Naik. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum. Doing dawah that is conveying the mystery of Islam is my duty, your duty and every Muslim's duty. Peace TV. The best time for a person who's fasting to make dua is while breaking his fasting. There is nothing that draws you closer to Allah better than obligatory acts. I want to, to fast every single day of the year. This is not acceptable. In Ramadan, there is Laylatul Qadr, the night of destiny. So one night is equivalent to 1,000 months, whatever you do in that night. Ramadan Fiqh Issues Tamam uloom mein, choti ka ilm Quran ka ilm. Aqidni momin ke liye Rasool ka farmana bhi aise hi hai, jaise ke Allah ka farmana. Infiradi hidayat bhi Quran mein hai, aur sabse badhka istimai hidayat, jiski aaj ke insan ko sabse ziyada darurat hai. اس شخص کا قرآن پر کوئی ایمان نہیں ہے تو اس کی حرام کردہ چیز کو اپنے لئے حلال ٹھائے گا جو اس قرآن کی طرف لوگوں کو بلائے گا کسی اور کو ہدایت ہو نہ ہو اس کی ہدایت ہو گئی راہ ہدایت Why the West is coming to Islam Islam has the solutions to the problems of the West whether it be atheism, secularism, Marxism, communism, westernism, Islam is destined to supersede all, master them all, overcome them all. Islam is not a religion only for the West, it's a religion for the whole of humankind. Dr. Zakir Naik speaks on why the West is coming to Islam in Truth Exposed. My name is Shakiri. My name is Naseem Abdul Rahman. My name is Faraj Wahaj. My name is Musa Bena. I was a Christian. Hindu. I had a Christian upbringing. 
When I asked 10 people about Hinduism, I used to get 10 different answers. My heart was attracted to Islam. I used to ask a lot of questions to the priests and I wasn't getting the answers. Why did I become a Muslim? Allah knows best. Alhamdulillah, I've made the right choice. My choice from ignorance to Islam. Discussing some of the misconceptions of Islam of uh, offering Allah. 
one of the major misconception of offering salah which the non muslims have is that they think that we muslims we worship towards the kaaba we muslim we don't worship the kaaba we worship towards the kaaba the kaaba is the qibla it's a direction suppose if the muslims want to offer salah here which direction do they face some may say east some may say the west some may say north some may say south which direction you face so for unity we have been commanded by allah subhanahu wa taala to face only towards the kaaba only towards the qibla the direction the muslims were the first to draw the map the world map and when they drew the map they had the south pole on top and north pole laid down when the westerners came they turned the map upside down and now we have the north pole up and the south pole down yet alhamdulillah the kaaba is in the center so allah subhanahu wa taala has made it that everyone worships towards the kaaba and the best answer you can give is in the hadith which says that there were even sahaba who stood on the kaaba and gave the azan i want to ask which idol worshiper will stand on the idol he worships the five daily salahs are the fajr the zuhur the asr the maghrib and the isha salah the first is the fajr salah which begins from the break of dawn till sunrise the second is the zuhur salah which begins early in the afternoon till the shadow reaches its its size the third is the asr salah immediately after the zuhur salah end it can be prayed till sunset the fourth is the maghrib salah which begins after sunset till late in the evening the fifth is the isha salah after the maghrib salah and it can be played till the break of dawn but it's preferable to pray uh, before 12 in midnight we muslims it's compulsory for all of us to do ablution and it was a commandment from allah subhanahu wa taala which was revealed to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the holy quran says in surah maida chapter 5 that oh you who believe wash your face and hands up to the elbow rub your head with water and your feet up to the ankles the call to the prayer is called the adhan and the adhan it carries the message but unfortunately many non muslims do not know the meaning of the adhan and many non muslims think that when we say allah akbar allah akbar allah is the greatest allah is the greatest they think that we are praising emperor akbar it may sound like a joke but it's very common that many non muslims think especially of our country india that in our adhan we praise emperor akbar the adhan carries a message and the message which is it says that allah akbar allah akbar allah is the greatest allah is the greatest ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah i bear witness that there is no god but allah i bear witness that there is no god but allah ashhadu anna muhammadur rasulullah ashhadu anna muhammadur rasulullah i bear witness that prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah i bear witness that prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah hayya ras salah hayya ras salah come to pray come to pray hayya al falah hayya al falah come to success come to success allah akbar allah akbar allah is the greatest allah is the greatest la ilaha illa allah there is no god but allah many non muslims say that when you say that salah is a sort of programming we say many muslims who offer salah but they are traitors they cheat they bribe so how come when you say that salah is a sort of programming you see many people who bribe who cheat The answer to this question was given in the Holy Quran which says that there are many people who pray just for showing off there are many people who just pray who do not understand the meaning for example if the imam after surah fatiha if he recites surah ikhlas chapter 112 verse number 1 which says qul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only who the imam is giving to guidance is you he is saying to you that go and tell the people tell those people who do not believe in one god 
Tell them that there is Allah one and only. There is only one God. Tell them. So, if a Muslim is offering salah, unless until he does not know the meaning, he cannot implement on the meaning. If you cannot implement on the meaning, how will you be get programmed? So, the best option, the option I give you is we Muslims, we should know Quran in Arabic. If we know Quran in Arabic, we can know the meaning. And if we can know the meaning, we can also implement on it. There are many people who say the answer was given this, but still they are not satisfied. They want a human logic. So when we give the human logic, the human logic is that suppose a patient, he goes to the hospital, if he has a disease and he goes to the hospital, and the doctor gives him a prescription of having the medicine three times a day. Having the medicine three times a day, the patient takes the medicine happily. He goes to the home, he reads the prescription, but does not, he does not take the medicine. Do you think he'll be cured by his disease? The patient reads the prescription, but not implement on it. You have to read it and implement on it. Another example. Suppose if you have a servant who is very punctual in coming to the office and he keeps on praising you. When you ring the bell, your servant, he comes running to you. Oh, master, what are your orders? And when you say, please deliver this message to my client, it's very urgent, please deliver it. Your servant, he keeps on praising you and says, oh, master, my master is great. I love him. My master is great. What will you do? Will you give him a bonus? Will you give him extra salary? Will you give him a promotion? will kick him out of the job. So, similarly, it has been a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has been commanded to us that we worship none but Allah and spread Islam, spread that there is only one God. There are some Muslims who just pray for showing. They don't pray from inside, from their heart. The main thing in Salah, is that you get guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how will you get the guidance? You will get the guidance if you know the meaning. How will you know the meaning? If you know the language. If you don't know the language, if you don't know Quran in Arabic, how will you get the message? How will you implement on the message? Many people, they offer salah without understanding. And once a very good example is that when our Indian Imam, his khirat was very good, his khirat was very nice. So once an Arab came to his mosque and he was offering salah. After the salah finished, the, the Arab, he was smiling at the Imam. The Imam was wondering that why this Arab guy is smiling at me. So he went and asked that why are you smiling at me? So the Arab person, he said that your qirat was very good, your qirat was very nice. But I was wondering that in your namaz, you, you put Yusuf salam in the pit, but you didn't take him out of the pit. It's very common that many people pray without understanding. Salah is also a form of ibadah. Many people have the misconception that salah is the only form of ibadah. Salah is not the only form of ibadah. It is one of the highest form of ibadah. Salah does not mean merely praying. Ibadah comes from the root word Abd, meaning servant, servitude. Ibada means prayer. Any commandment which you follow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is called Ibada. Any commandment which you do not do what Allah has asked you not to do, you are doing Ibada. So Ibada does not mean nearly mean Salah. It has much more. Any following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Ibada. And Salah is not the only form of Ibadah, it is one of the highest form of Ibadah. The Sayyid Bukhari says that the Prophet said, pray as you have seen me praying. That means you have to see how the Prophet prayed. And now we can't see where, how the Prophet prayed. So for that you have to go back to the Hadiths. The Holy Quran says in Surah Zariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Which means, I have created the human beings 
and the jinns not but to worship me. There are also other social benefits in offering salah. When the Muslims come to prayer, their brotherhood increases. The solidarity between them increases. The Prophet said not to leave a gap bet uh, between you and me or for getting the devil inside. The Prophet was not referring the devil of uh, the devil which you see in the Onida TV ad. The Prophet was referring to the devil of racism, of caste, of color, irrespective whether you are black or white, whether you are rich or poor. When you stand for Salah, stand shoulder to shoulder. And this was a commandment which was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. While we offer Salah, it also increases brotherhood. When the Muslims stand for prayer, they love, it, the mutual love increases. It, pro, it protects them from scandal monging, from backbiting. Allah says in the Holy Quran, I have created you from a single pair of men and women, and I have divided into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other, not that you may despite each other. The Holy Quran also says in Surah Hamza, which says, Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiter. The Holy Quran says, also says in Surah Hujrat, which says, Let not men among you laugh at each other. They may never know that the latter may be better than the former. I would end my talk by giving the quotation of the Holy Quran from Surah Anam, chapter 6, which says, Kul in salati wa nusuki wa mahyahya wa mati illa rabbil alameen la sharika lahu wa bizalika umitu wa ana awal wal muslimin. Which says, Say, truly, my prayers, my service of sacrifices, my life and death is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the cherisher of this world. He has no partner, this I have been commanded, and I am of the first to bow to his will. Wa akhir dawan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.